Hi, thank you for uh, having me in this session. My uh, talk is called Beast Boundary Element Analysis and Simulation Toolkit. My name is Christoph Kuhls and I'm a researcher at the TU Delft. So the type of problems that uh, my package addresses is um, a, a scattering problem. Now there are scattering problem in, uh, in all kinds of uh, branches of physics, uh, acoustics, statics, electromagnetics, elastodynamics. I will focus on the electromagnetics case because that is where my background lies and that is also the area in which beast is, uh, is the most matured. So we're having an incident electromagnetic wave that um, hits and a, a very good conductor, perfect conductor. And uh, we are tasked with finding the total electric fields, that is the solution of Maxwell's equations, and such that the radiated field is radiating away from the scatterer, as you would expect. And the boundary condition of this boundary value problem is that the tangential electric field on the scatterer is zero. This is uh, the physical condition um, near a very good conductor. Yes. Now, um, these kind of problems, uh, like uh, boundary value problems in enclosed areas, can be dealt with by the finite, finite element methods. We, um, in this particular scenario, opt for a boundary element method because it offers some advantages. The solution we get is perfectly radiating. There are no approximating boundary conditions. There is no dispersion error because the solution is expressed explicitly in terms of the Green's function. This is also why the solution away from the boundary is uh, perfectly analytic. And um, if you combine these schemes with a matrix compression algorithm, you even get asymptotically, asymptotically lower computational complexity, even though these, these methods are, are very difficult to actually implement. The mathematical description uh, is, is done by reducing the boundary value problem to the boundary of the domain and then you end up with an integral equation that is uh, phrased in terms of the induced current j which is also the boundary value the tangential boundary value of the magnetic field and cross h on the surface gamma of the scatter of the obstacle from which your uh, wave scatters away so you are looking in essence for that induced current such that the corresponding radiated electric field, which is the left-hand side of this equation, exactly cancels the incident right-hand side, the incident electric field, which we choose and, for example, could be a plane wave. To um, solve this system, we apply, in essence, the same technique as uh, we do in the finite element method. That is, we um, uh, move to a variation of formulation. This is done by testing the equation with a generic function, k. Okay? This is pretty generic apart from some smoothness conditions. And testing means that we multiply and then uh, integrate. And uh, integration by parts is typically applied to lower the singularity of the integrals and counts and also to give the formula a more symmetric view. And then to discretize the system, the function k is limited to a finite dimensional space. And also the candidate solution is limited to a finite dimensional space, which we here generically denote x. The package beast is, is essentially made to facilitate, facilitate this, uh, this process and um, its uh, design goals are that it's high performance with performance compatible to C++, easy to use in the sense that the formulation should be close to those uh, as encountered in a mathematical description of the scattering problem. The package uh, is easy to maintain, extend typically by uh, overwriting or extending methods that are defined inside of the package, and easy to teach and, um, and enable collaboration, uh, uh, well, both with students and, and other researchers. Beast is the top layer of um, a cluster of packages that uh, each have a certain responsibility in this ecosystem. The main other package that um, it relies on is ComScience Meshes, which is a meshing library, but the meshing library is specifically aimed at computational science meshes. At the time of writing, I saw there were some excellent meshing libraries available, mo mostly um, focusing on uh, graphical applications. And um, because, and I will go a little bit deeper into this, the main difference between the finite element method and the boundary element method is the level of challenge of the integrals encounter. There are some packages 
especially designed to deal with highly specialized uh, integrals. One is a Zartes Fab quadrature, and that is a quadrature method, a package that implements a quadrature method that is very general in the sense that it can deal with weakly singular and even Cauchy singular integrants on both flat faceted and curved uh, domains, uh, triangular and uh, cyclical domains. Then uh, Wilton INS84 uh, is a highly specialized package uh, designed to deal with exactly one type of integrals and that is uh, integrals where the integrand is a power of um, the distance, uh, the, the distance between uh, of the radius, the distance between two points. Um, and the domain is the intersection of a triangle and a spherical shell. And it will become clearer later why, why these type of integrals are so important in the context of parallel methods. And BEAST ties all of this together. It contains the local and global description of finite element spaces. The, oper the operators and it links the, the various geometrical um, uh, configurations to um, uh, quadrature strategies. To give you an idea how the package is used, this is the, the proverbial hello world, which um, actually implements and solves the problem that I talked about, the scattering of a wave by a perfect conductor. So typically you create a mesh um, the mesh is, uh, like in many other cases, an, uh, a type wrapper around a vertex array and an index array. It comes with a rich API that can deal with all the issues that one would typically, well, all the challenges that one would typically encounter in the context of boundary element methods. On top or subordinate to this um, uh, mesh, one can define finite element spaces, which are spaces of functions that uh, obey certain continuity conditions and that when um, restricted to a, a single, um, for example, triangle of the mesh, have a, um, a rather simple um, polynomial content. The left-hand side in our formulations are integral operators for um, acoustics and Maxwell problems. The two basic integral operations, the single layer and the double layer, are predefined in the package. And the right-hand side is a known field, and also for these two types of uh, physics, plane waves are, uh, are implemented for both. The, the difference is that the electromagnetic plane wave has a polarization, which does not make sense for a pressure wave. The actual writing down of um, the variational problem happens in terms of generic trial and testing vectors, which you can declare, and by linking them with the finite element spaces, with uh, you know, the element sign, which is translated in this macro to a a pair and has stored in the dictionary for later lookup, but it makes it it look a, it makes it look a little bit closer to the mathematical problem. And then these descriptions can be um, solved, um, and solved means uh, assembled and solved by various um, solvers. Um, the two main solvers that are implemented right now are a simple LU solver and a GMS solver. But I hope to uh, to expand in this area of the package. The result is actually a vector of um, coefficients. And in order to get something meaningful from this, you uh, typically want to do some post-processing. The simplest form of post-processing is to interpolate the functions in the centers of the facets that make up the mesh. And then you can make a, a plot like this and a plot of the norm with a color scale. It gives you an idea of where the current is induced and, and you can see the effects of polarization, for example. The plane wave was coming from the bottom of the screen here. Other things that might, one might be interested in are um, the field in the vicinity of the scatter, for example, to examine where the energy density of energy deposited is the highest. And uh, the far field, very far away, a limiting case, very far away from the object. Um, and in electrical engineering, for uh, obvious reasons, this is sometimes referred to as the Raider cross section because of the field very far away from the object is high, then these objects in that direction are very visible on radar. And then you can, uh, using plots, I rely on plots to, to make uh, various pictures of these uh, secondary quantities. If you can see, for example, the far field along an arc, a meridian arc, uh, going from zero North Pole to Pi South Pole and uh, the near field both as a heat map and a contour plot in the vicinity of the object and you can see that the contours are detached from the object which is typical for a radiating solution 
one that you know carries energy away from from the scatter. Um, there are various um, assembly-like methods that are a little bit different from the main assembly uh, code, but are um, specialized to do this post-processing and that uh, have um, a pretty straightforward usage pattern. The core of the package is the assembly loop. And um, probably many of you know assembly of finite element methods. So I will um, mostly stress here the difference between finite element assembly and boundary element assembly. Um, boundary element operators are integral operators, not differential operators. Integral operators that um, are based on the Green's function and that have any two points in space communicate. And uh, the consequence for assembly of this is that the matrix that will be assembled is a dense matrix. And the number of for loops in the assemble um, routine essentially doubles. We're not having a single geometric loop, but a double um, geometric loop. The role of assembly data is similar as in finite elements. So um, in uh, finite elements and boundary elements, a basis function is, uh, has contributions from a small number of often adjacent geometric entities. And the assembly data gives you, in a sense, the transposed information. Given a geometric entity, it tells you which basis functions are relevant to that geometric uh, element. Um, quadrature data is computed before the double for loop because it will, it will be used over and over again. So it makes sense to compute it here before. And the most important difference here is that based on the geometric configuration, the relative position of the two geometric elements under consideration, you select a quadrature rule. And the type of quadrature rule is encoded in the type of the object strut. And then you call the, the routine that is responsible for the computation of all local integrals, which then will be scattered based on the assembly data in the main global matrix. Now, um, um, this is actually real dynamic dispatch, but fortunately we don't have a, we don't suffer in performance. So the compiler optimizations are strong enough here to give us the desired performance. There is a limited amount of parallelism in this code. We're not using coloring schemes, which are a way of doing a, a log-free uh, multi-threading of finite elements. The reason why I'm not doing coloring based schemes here is that the, the generality of the finite element spaces that I uh, ambition to support is um, goes beyond the, the typical finite element spaces where the supports are, for example, all triangles around the vertex or all um, triangles that share an edge or something like that. And coloring schemes rely on this connection between topology and function definition. So rather I um, order all degrees of freedom along a space filling curve and then I subdividing in different groups. And because they were ordered along space filling curves, their um, joint domains are um, fairly regular shapes in the sense that their boundary is small in a sense compared to their interior. And this allows us to simply divide degrees of freedom over multiple threads. Some work that relates to geometry near the boundary will be done double, will be done twice, so you will lose a little bit of performance. But because you patch them together using this uh, space filling curve concept, that overhead is not too bad and you still get a decent speed up as you can see here. You get a speed of three using four cores, which is not amazing, but still worth the effort with a, a slightly more general scheme, I would say. Um, one thing that I think is unique to BEAST is the support of retarded potential integral equations. These are time domain boundary integral equations. And the idea is the same, but now everything has to hold for all time. So you're looking for an induced current such that the radiated field cancels exactly an incident field of your choice everywhere on the surface, but also at all times. And you can see that the retarded time, T minus the distance, features prominently here in this integral equation. It requires its own special assembly routine, which is uh, fairly complicated, and the time dimension is dealt with uh, differently than the spatial dimensions, there's also a relationship between space indices and time indices. The only time indices that are active, that, that receive non-zero contributions, are those that correspond to times that are exactly the time that the signal needs to travel between a pair of geometric entities. 
but the use of these methods is uh, almost the same. Um, the main difference now is that your finite element spaces are defined to be the tensorial products of a uh, spatial component and a temporal component. Uh, but from the user's point of view, this is really all you need. And um, integrals are done really accurately using World on INS84 because these methods are notorious to get stable, so to get useful uh, results out that do not explode as time, simulated time continues. And it's very, very important to, uh, to, to use the highest accuracy quadrature routines, and that's why there is a dedicated package for it. The result, if you fix the point and you follow time, is, is, uh, is this type of current that you see uh, simulate and fluctuate and then go to zero again as energy is radiated into the space surrounding the object. Some um, other features that we'll quickly go through be before uh, I will uh, go to the conclusion slide is that local operators also appear in boundary element methods. So finite element assembly is part of these, and you can get, you can define quite a lot of them, uh, fairly complicated also um, uh, finite element problems here. For example, this is an eigenmode of the Laplacian um, defined on the steroidal object. It is also possible to write down systems of equations. Uh, what you need to do is you have to declare multiple trial um, symbols and, and test symbols. And then the different blocks that fit into this macro system uh, will um, simply be communicated to the system by having various bilinear forms act on um, different pairs of trial vectors and spatial vectors. And the assembly routine will figure all of that out and will make sure that the correct contributions end up in the correct location. This is, for example, important if you want to do scattering by penetrable objects where both Cauchy data have a role to play. If you have a, an, a domain decomposition method where the equation is fixed, but the geometric configuration changes, then you can rely on a different feature of BEAST, which is the definition of finite element spaces as direct products of more atomic finite element spaces. And that is something that is demonstrated here. This is the case of multiple sheets that meet along a junction. In the equation, there is a term that acts as an interior penalty, and that um, will ensure that uh, the current there fulfills the Dirichlet condition, the sum of all incoming fluxes will add up to zero. Um, the formulation is the same. We defined the finite element space as the product of three others, and uh, that uh, can easily be adapted if you are dealing with different geometries of the same type. So that is um, where I would like to um, wrap up. What things do I think need to go still in BEAST? Uh, matrix com compression, speed up, parallelization, so the high performance computing stuff. Um, support for uh, something else than uh, acoustics and uh, electromagnetics. So I would like to put uh, static kernels in there in 2D, 3D, also elastodynamic kernels. Um, the support for systems of equations can be better, especially in the time domain. And I would like to come up with some generic algorithm that um, given a very complex geometry, uh, we'll know how to put it together and then come up with a system and that will solve that, uh, that multi-domain uh, problem for you. Integration into the existing ecosystems, there's obviously a lot of really great packages that would be good to um, link to that in order to um, avoid any double work or to rely on features that are existing there and that uh, are missing in beast. And uh, documentation and tutorials to um, to make it easier for people to, uh, to use this package and to uh, explain what the features are. Thank you for, uh, for your attention. And uh, if you have any questions on the chat, please let me know, or, um, or I'm also available uh, by email. Thank you, bye.